Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Colopsidian in Act 6 more specifically. I'm making today's video just because I haven't seen too much gameplay of Colopsidian in kind of endgame content and there is this kind of fairly common stigma that it is extremely difficult to play him. So in this video we're going to be taking a look at him with a full synergy team, sometimes without any synergy team at all whatsoever without suicides for initial bit and then the last clip is going to be with suicide masteries on so purposely initially we're going to be taking a look at like first fights as we can see we are at one charge uh, so this is the first fight of the quest so ramping up call obsidian we're 50 hits in and agent venom is at 15 percent and as we can see so it's Call Obsidian isn't doing his monster amounts of damage in this fight. However, 55 hits to pretty much take down uh, Act 6 opponent, it, I, it's not that bad. We don't have any suicides in this uh, as well. And we saw that it just took us 59 hits to take down the first fight. So it's not the quickest, but it's definitely not the worst. So now we're going to take a look at 624. Again, first fight against the Yellow Jacket. We're at 1 uh, Persistent Charge. We don't have any synergy teams, we don't have anything helping us. This is just pure rank six, rank 2 6 star Calopsidian and just doing his initial ramp up fight. And yeah, obviously we're not gonna see any kind of crazy, crazy numbers in here. But the damage output isn't like as measly and horrible and difficult to deal with either. Especially if you can get a couple of armor breaks, you have route buff working for you. And which, just FYI, you will be able to achieve much more consistently if you're running like a maxed out high sig 5 star. Just because signature ability does really help in these initial ramp up fights. Because then you can either have the big fury buff or the route buff on pretty much all the fight. Whereas at low signature level, you do have a fairly big cooldown on them. But again, uh, 58 hits, the fight is almost over. So we finished this one on 61, barely kind of any difference. And I forgot to mention that Agent Venom in general is like a horrible matchup for Call Obsidian, but it still wasn't that bad. And now we're going to take a look at Power Struggle. Now, this is a fight where we can't access our level 3, so we can't renew our Thanos' favors. We constantly get power drained, uh, but still, so... We are absolutely mincing away in this superior environment. This is from Quest 615, Power Struggle Global Node. And as we can see here, 36 hits in and he's nearly down. So this is a ramp up fight, right guys? So 44 hits in in a ramp up fight to kill down an opponent. I don't think it's that bad or that tragic. But once we're done with the ramp up fights, we're going to be taking a look at the fights that we can do once he has a couple of charges on and then we're going to be checking out some full path clears. So this is second fight and we have Black Widow. So she is not the easiest opponent together with this annoying global node where we do need to be careful not to make any contact while that yellow timer is up. But still, as we can see here, even though we can't land a parry, we can still block bait like heavy attacks. We can punish her special attacks if we have to, just to kind of be cheeky and sly and get our heavy attacks in, get those armor breaks up. And so let's going to take a look how long is this fight going to be. So we are 14, 19 hits in and she's at 67% health. And we are stacking up more and more armor breaks, slowly but surely. Only with three persistent charges, like our ability accuracy on armor breaks isn't that great, but still overall we can get some decent amount of armor breaks. So at five armor breaks and a roundabout active, we should be able to deal loads of damage to this Black Widow. So one level two and she's nearly down already. Now unfortunately I did not manage to kill her before that yellow timer kicked in, so we need to wait that out. But I believe as soon as it expires that will be lights out for Black Widow. So now that this fight is over, we're going to jump over to 612, and that is an Ultron quest. And this quest is kind of a bit perfect for Calopsidian, just because you have that one warm-up fight with one of the OG Avengers, and in this case it's Cap. And that's why we're going to quickly finish this fight off, and then we can jump on like the first serious fights already with like 4 charges, which is perfect. So here we go, 11 hits, the fight's over. But now we're moving on to the tech path and that's explosive personality and some other stuff. So at this point we have like four charges on. We're still not running any suicides. We do have a support team for Call Obsidian, but let's just check out how quickly these guys go down. So two heavy attacks, 
30 heavy attacks. So with 9 hits in, 3 heavy attacks landed. And we just bait out his heavy attack, finish off a combo, and the fight is over. So 14 hits, and that's it. Act 6, fight is over. And this is the kind of performance you can see from him throughout the entire quest. Once you have done your first fight, you're pretty much set. Now, I ate an accidental heavy attack there, but that's not a big deal. So now we did two heavy attacks and still finish the combo, another combo, and the fight is over. 16 hits, act six opponent goes down. Now let's move on to Nebula. We're gonna quickly run through this entire path and it's gonna be an absolute breeze. I think the original clear time was about five and a half minutes. I have sped up the footage in this video a bit, like times 1.5, but yeah, it only took like five and a half minutes to go entire path in act six. So that is quite crazy. And yeah, so with Call Obsidian, it is obvious that he can't do all of it. He doesn't have the greatest amount of utility. However, he does have very convenient abilities to uh, bypass auto block and evade and parry projectiles and stuff like that but there's like no immunities no power control however when you hit that hard quite often that will not matter later on we're gonna have a fight with Cal obsidian against juggernaut on spite node and we're still gonna blitz through that one but let's get back to this current footage so we have stacked spider-man let's see how this one goes again one heavy attack, another heavy attack, we're gonna activate route, not yet, so third heavy attack, now we're activating route, and that's it, that's all she wrote, 13 hits, and he goes down. Now we're actually gonna jump onto that sentinel mini boss, and even though he has biohazard on, right, so biohazard is definitely a node that Call Obsidian is not meant to fight. And let's see how it works out. Who dies first? Do we die or can we take down this Sentinel before we bleed out? So we have two bleeds on from Biohazard already. We landed two heavy attacks, activated a road buff, and that's it. Like, KO. That's simple as that. Even though it had Biohazard, obviously you don't want to do it for like entire Biohazard lane just because you would run out of health, but a single Biohazard fight with the ramped up call, not a problem. So now we're back in 6.11 with no retreat on, and this time we're gonna be dealing with uh, Red Skull. So this is the second fight in the quest. We have three Thanos' favors on, so we're far from being completely like ramped up, but still with three Thanos' favors, this fight lasted 14 hits once again. So once you have done your initial ramp up fight, which typically is gonna be something in between 60 to 40, 40 to 60 hits, something like that for most part, if you're running call without suicides. Next fights are already typically a breeze. They're definitely much, much quicker. So you only realistically have like one important ramp up fight. And I think that is kind of where key of using Call of Obsidian comes from. You do need to pick your initial fight. Just because it's the first fight in the quest does not mean you should be using Call of Obsidian there if you're trying to ramp him up. Because later on, once he's ramped, there's very little he can do, just because he kills everything so fast. But the initial fight is definitely something you need to be careful and kind of picky. So now we accidentally ate a heavy attack from Punisher, but it does not matter. He's already down within like one combo. So that is more or less how Calypso didn't deal with all of his fights. He drops his initial heavy attacks that do deal some damage, not the greatest amount. But then you activate route buff, do a combo, and opponents are pretty much dead. So here we are on eight missions, three heavy attacks in, activated route buff, three hits, opponent goes down. And that goes for pretty much everybody, just because of how much damage you dish out so quickly. It is quite insane. It's definitely a pleasure to kind of like, once he's ramped up, all of these fights, you just look at them as a joke. You just want to drop a couple of heavy attacks, and that's it. You know the fight is going to be over. So now we're going to take down this Sabertooth boss and then we're going to move on to uh, Act 6, Chapter 2, Quest 1 and I'm going to show how Call Obsidian just can kind of brute force through his way and many bad matchups. Uh, but yeah, so first of all we have to deal with this Sabertooth. Now I am going to make a slip up just because I'm going to get a bit greedy. So here we activated route on 9 armor uh, breaks and we dealt already like a good chunk of damage Keep in mind, this is like 55k Act 6 boss. But yeah, there I tried to hit additional heavy attack while he had some power, so I got punished for it. So that's definitely my fault. 
but we're still going to be able to close this fight out just because as we can see we have 15 armor breaks on we have fury buff active and that's pretty much all she wrote we dropped a level two and the fight is about to be over so this was rank two six stars six 20 call obsidian with no suicides no nothing but let's check out now 6.21 so this is a life cycle node which is fairly annoying luckily call obsidian can play around it fairly well just because you drop heavy attacks anyways uh, but this is a first ramp up fight in this video we are running suicides though but still so this is fight where we have one charge active 17 hits in he's already at 44 percent so i don't think that is the biggest kind of problem in the fight to ramp him up like in act six here just because yeah like the ramp up fights obviously aren't as impressive as when he's already ramped up but 32 hits we drop a level three and that's it the fight's over so he can stand his own with only like one charge as well so next fight is against colossus he has spiked armor on believe and vigor and some other good stuff but with four charges let's see how this one works out so here was the first heavy attack second heavy attack i think we're gonna go for one more activate route buff and he's already completely melting away unfortunately we kind of stalled there a bit we couldn't get another full good combo in but now we're gonna go back to throwing heavy attacks just so we can bypass that life cycle node but that is going to be about it so we drop a level two he's under stun effect and we hit him again 32 hits second fight already super easy now we have juggernaut now this juggernaut has wigger life cycle spite definitely a bad bad matchup for Calopsidian. But still, let's see how we do. So first of all, we do need to deal with that spite, and that spite's gonna be active till our Thanos' favors expire. So now once they have expired, we don't have to worry about spite. And now we kind of need to be careful whether I want or not to activate route buff, because that would trigger spite again, and I need a bit of breathing space. So in this fight, we're gonna approach it a bit differently. So instead uh, of activating our buffs and furies, we're simply going to rely on our armor breaks for the damage, because that is also perfectly good option so at this point he's at 10 armor breaks and at 20 percent health so we basically just need to disable life cycle drop level 3 30 hits in so juggernaut is class disadvantage we have taken down this guy fairly easily kind of playing around spite playing around life cycle vigor all that unstoppable and other bs that juggernaut has so next on eight Thanos' blessings. Let's just see how quickly this Deadpool melts away. Obviously, we can completely ignore this Deadpool's regeneration abilities as well, just because of the amount of armor breaks on him. They are debuffs, so we don't have anything to worry about. 19 hits in, we bypass life cycle, and he goes down. Now, Domino. Now, let's see how quickly we can get rid of this Domino. And spoiler alert, we're also going to be testing out Calopsidian against this Symbiote Supreme boss. So that is going to be also an interesting fight. But anyways, two heavy attacks. We activated Route, uh, two combos. She's dead. We just need to bypass life cycle, and that's about it. So we do need to be careful because Domino is a bit kind of tricky. If she's going to catch us, it's not going to be good. But still, so she's at 1% health long ago. So 26 hits in, we're done. Next, let's move on to the Dormammu we always have to fight, right? Dormammu, once again, should be a horrible matchup. However, when you hit this card, there are very few horrible matchups in the game. So we have Soft Guard, we have like Dormammu's Degen ability, we have everything working against us. But still, let's drop two heavy attacks, activate route buff, do one combo do another heavy attack, he's at 2%, hit him once, 15 hits, Dormammu goes down, didn't even break a sweat. But now let's move on to this Symbiote Supreme. This is going to be the last fight of the video. So as you saw, we took a huge chunk of health at the beginning of the fight because of Symbiote Supreme's ability to negate all of our active buffs. So we don't have any Tannis' favors on us, but still our tactic is going to be fairly simple. We're just going to stack up as many arm breaks on him as we can to deal insane amount of damage. So that was like a nice casual 12k medium hit, which isn't bad at all. And yeah, basically we're just going to try our best not to trigger dexterity and stack many armor breaks on opponent and so that's a 20k crit on one heavy so that's the third hit of heavy attack for 20k jesus so we have 15 armor breaks on him at many a times and uh, that's as simple as that so here we're gonna parry uh his level two 
And now we're going to be pretty much done with this guy. We can see 15 armor breaks. We're hitting insanely hard. We have pretty much nothing to worry about. We just need to disable that life cycle node. And we're going to be good to go without any ton of favors, without any road. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you liked uh, this kind of video, let me know what other kind of end game footage you want to record of what champions. And I'll do my best to accommodate. But let's just enjoy that Symbiote Supreme getting smacked in the wall. Don't forget to like, sub, and I'm going to see you guys soon. Later.